but um, they are building it and then we put it all together. I'm Lori Groters and I choreographed Peter and the Wolf. I just basically, when I get in the, the room to choreograph, I don't have my, my steps choreographed yet. I do it there. I just, I listen and I go, oh, let's try this. It's a lot of fun. I love choreographing for story ballets. So this was really fun ballet to choreograph too. My name is Saka Nusta, and I'm the artistic director for Ballet de Bonne. And I choreographed just um, The Wolf, and because um, I felt like she has an imagination, storyline imagination. Watching her, and I always mesmerize how she hears the music and, and how uh, she gets into the character. And, and plus, she's the grandfather in the, uh, Peter and the Wolf, and my favorite part. I know, it's very duck-like. <laughs> my name is Amelia Grubb, and I'm dancing the role of the duck. So when I'm a duck, I definitely do, like my first entrance onto the stage is I, I'm waddling, and yeah. And it's actually kind of funny to me because dancers are often called out for, you know, walking like ducks, because we walked turned out, you know. So uh, it's, I guess it comes naturally to me to, to walk like a duck. <laughs> I feel fabulous in my duck costume. In this costume, everything is obviously very tight, with the exception of the tail. It's kind of like dancing with another arm or leg. So you go for a turn, you're like, I got this one, I got this one, I got these two, and then there's another one swinging around out there. So that's a little, it's challenging. That one was also a little bit tough because when we started choreographing the part with Peter and the rope, uh, we had to worry about, okay, had his tail's in the way. Uh, it was a lot of trying to figure out moves. So I have on my tail, which is my favorite part. I get to swing it around a lot. And my headpiece, which honestly, this was the biggest part I think that made me feel like a cat is because I feel like I have my ears now and I can do all these, these motions. I get to feel like my two cats at home, which is really fun. I think Peter and the Wolf is just a, it's just a great, pretty simple storyline that a child can follow, but it has enough nuance and enough um, depth of character that those, each melody and each theme and each dancer really represents something slightly different. And I think that that's what's really important. It's very cool because it's a collaboration and two art forms coming together just creating this beautiful, uh, another art form. I love performing to live music. It definitely just adds a whole layer of, of energy and just the substance to the performance. It's just so magical going from a recording to the, the live instruments. It's just this textured sound coming from within the space is beautiful. It's just, it makes the performance better. It does. As an artist, uh, a courage is to go out there when the curtain is up. You know, I like to think of getting on stage kind of like, like swimmers when they jump in a cold pool in the fir first thing in the morning. At first, it's kind of like, oh, you don't really want to do it. It's a little nerve wracking, but as soon as you do it, you just kind of let go and it, everything just sort of happens. But I was the kind of a person who just jumped. And my life, I'm like that too. And I feel like, yes, you think about it, but you have to have a courage and you have to have, um, you have to take risks, you know, and as a dancer, and you have to try. It was all planned out the whole season that uh, four productions and you know, the COVID comes in and it just kind of uh, became a vegetable soup and for a minute and no, like as you know, nobody knew what was going on. And we worked through that, um, trying to figure out how we can continue at first just creating and doing what we do, but then also how do we continue sharing it with our community because that's really why we do what we do. So all of that really resonated with us as experimenting and exploring our own resiliency. 
you can dance by yourself, but a lot of the time you are performing or rehearsing or taking class with a group of other artists. And there's a shared humanity in that. And I think that in this moment where most of us feel deeply isolated, having an opportunity to, to connect with the arts, even if it is still within your, your own little <laughs> pandemic pod in front of your TV in the living room, you can still get a semblance of that shared experience and the inspiration to, to do something that is, that is different and new and, and learn something and feel something. I hope that this really reinforces the importance of human connection and the importance of art. And I feel like people have really experienced the significance of the absence of those things. I think that the most beautiful and significant part of, you know, a society is, is its art. And I think people, I hope that people realize that more now and that we can really connect through art. I just find that there's some part of me that needs to be expressed through a music that I can't express any other way. And um, playing an instrument is kind of a catharsis of a way to release emotions, like I said, that you can't um, release any other way. And I think that's probably the same with why people dance or why people act or why people write or why people paint. And so that's why I think the arts are a way to feel something without having to say it.